On the internet, people can be whoever they want to be. Scammers know this. They're masters at it. They say fame has a price. In this series, we explore the costs of celebrity in the copy-paste age. This is the world of famous and catfished. Today we'll be speaking to Tom. He's an international model who has been in countless magazines, is a well-known actor, and also a Big Ten Championship swimmer. Our search specialist ran an in-depth on Tom's half a million followers across its social media platforms and found thousands of fake profiles generating millions of dollars through scams using this guy's photos. Stick around because later we're also going to interview two women who almost fell victim to Tom's online fake profiles. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We really do appreciate all of the support. So let's get into it. So Tom, welcome to Famous and Catfished. It seems like you've kind of done a little bit of everything. Tell us maybe some of the, like the cool shoots you've done or like where you've traveled because of that. Yeah, it's been exciting. Um, when I first started getting into the modeling, I remember different um, people in the industry saying, hey, you're gonna get to travel to all these cool places. But I already traveled a ton in my previous world, so I wasn't getting in, into it for the travel. <sighs> this is gonna sound bad. But now traveling as the talent, Mm -hmm. You're treated like a VIP. Sure. And it really feels cool to have that kind of attention. It only lasts for like a day or so, but still, it's, you know, I, I never dreamed about being a model. It was not a lifelong goal. It's so out of my comfort zone. Every shoot I have is a new gig. Like Ashley was wonderful because they're such a well-known, well-respected company. My most memorable though, is the Orange Theory shoot. It was two days of intense workouts and I'm a fit guy and I didn't think about how grueling it was going to be. And there were shoots, they were trying to get certain shots that I literally could not, I couldn't stand up for. And my favorite gig ever was with a company called Mooring. The Moorings, they do high end yacht rentals. So mm -hmm. you can buy a yacht for a, a week with the captain and food and, so we experienced a week of traveling through St. Martin and St. Bart's, living like people who rent these yachts. Yeah. So I was like really intrigued to see that you were a like championship swimmer. You broke like lots of records. I swam for University of Michigan. I went to the Olympic trials in 1980, which is the year we boycotted. But I remember Ronald Reagan sitting in the stands cheering us on. God, it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I had a quick career. I didn't start swimming really till I had a car. Looking through your profile, you have like a very like consistent message, like be kind. Where does that come from? Was that something you've always held or is that just, you know, like a message you think like people need to hear more and more? The most important thing I can do is just have a positive messages, message and have people, I know people look for that message every day that yeah. I, whether it's a picture that they enjoy or a smile or, and this sounds so corny, but it does. Um, I have some. I have some great followers. You had mentioned that. I mean, you get like ten to fifteen people a day contacting, and those are just people that know, like, find out that this is you. This is this is just people that have gone and, and somehow figured out like who you were, that and they thought they were talking to you. Let's talk about that a little bit. What are some like weird experiences that you've gone through? To me, as simple as just opening an email or a message, a direct message, and just being screamed at for abandoning somebody basically at the aisle. Always caught off guard by that because I'm not expecting to be um, just yelled at. Do they, Because they're, they're thinking I'm the person who has been courting them all this time. People are, are constantly telling me there are so many Tom Ernstings out there. I don't know who if this is the real one. The next day we got in contact with two women who had experienced an online relationship with one of Tom's fake profiles. Let's see what Mary had to say. So um, what was your experience dealing with Tom's photos? Um, how did they initially contact you and what happened? We were chatting and then he asked me for money and I said, I'm sorry, you know, and he his money was tied up and he was trying to finish this project. How did these people contact you? On Instagram. All through I just, Instagram. I like, block them. It's just, you feel bad for these people because they're using their face, their name, 
or um, fake names, but they're using their images for like, I just call it evil purposes. Mandy also had an experience with one of Tom's fake profiles. So let's see what she had to say. And so I reverse image this picture and lo and behold, Tom popped up. Well, what's going on here, you know? And uh, um, so I messaged him back and I said, this isn't you, this is Tom Anston, um, a model from, no, it's me. I said, it's not you. And so insistent that it was him that you could believe it. You know, I fished and I found out that um, um, Tom was, you know, like a, a gay American model, you know, in his own right. And, and I thought, how can you, how dare you do this to innocent people? You would be surprised. A lot of people who've been victimized by romance scammers are very educated and accomplished. Our job at Social Catfish is to empower these men and women to come forth and report these types of scams. We believe this is a billion dollar industry and three to 10% of these people actually come forth and report being scammed to the FBI. Really sad stories of people who turned their credit card over to somebody and they maxed it out at $32,000. And the $1,000 somebody sent to somebody waiting at the border for money to cross the border. How long ago did this start? And when this first started, like, I mean, did you take it as a compliment or, you know, you know, what, what were your initial thoughts? Definitely took it as a compliment at first. And when I would mention it to people, they're like, oh, you should be honored and complimented. And I mean, to this day, they still say that, but they, nobody except probably you appreciates the volume of messages and fake profiles and uh, the communication that goes along with it and the kind of the responsibility I feel towards these people who reach out to me saying, hey, you need to know this, or can you just write me back and let me know you're the real one? There's a lot of people in Nigeria who do this. Um, and I don't know if it's one, I don't know if it's a hundred guys in a room all saying, here's the picture, you know, I'll just make up a name and I, I don't know, maybe, you have some info on that. This is a full-time job for these scammers. They're talking to 40 to 50 people a day for hours. This is literally their job. This scam happens all over the world, but Nigeria is known to have the most romance scammers. Nigeria is a poor country where the American dollar goes a long way. A thousand dollars can feed a large family for months. A hundred thousand dollars is enough to retire. A lot of these people are hiding behind like fake IPs, so they're you know changing the locations and they're creating you know it's too easy to create an email address without verification. It's too easy to to create what's called like a VoIP phone number, like an internet number, and have that forwarded to your cell phone number and use that. I mean, I could go create ten today and and forward them you know to my phone you know within you know an hour. Appreciate being a part of this and anything you need, I'm happy to jump in. Awesome. Again, it was really nice chatting with you. Um, you have a great day in Michigan and uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Bye. See ya.